Okay, and uh, I'd like to say a special hello to any of the atheists there in Austin who have never called in there. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we're talk uh, we're, we've are we been talking a lot about the uh, RFA Religious Freedom Amendment because uh, the Senate is now in the process of debating that. Well, I think it's the House. It's in the House. Mm -hmm. oh, I thought the Senate uh, is House still in the House. I'm yeah, sorry. It hasn't uh, been voted on yet. And, uh, so I've been, I've been corrected there. And, and it's still in, in the House. So uh, let your representatives and, uh, boy, I'm trying to think who a representative from uh, this area would be. Well, we can't really say his name anyway. You, you're not allowed to? Well, I mean, well, that would go be for a call causes, to but... Uh, yeah, that would definitely be a call to action if I told you to call But him. It's good <laughs> enough to say that all non-Christians in the United States, and even some Christians, should be very concerned about the Religious Freedom Amendment. I mean, I just read it, and as short as it is, it's a mess. Well, or, or the Muslims, or anybody, you know, whose God are they talking about? Mm -hmm. it, uh, That's right. It's, it, and it's, uh, it's really kind of, kind of neat to see uh, even Christians lining up in favor of religious freedom. Uh, Baptists have a, have a great history. I mean, it, I guess at one point in history, they, they underwent persecution. So they understand what can happen when the majority thinks everybody ought to be the same religion. Mm -hmm. So a lot of their groups line up uh, on the side of uh, the wall of separation. Uh, the Jewish groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, good point. When, yeah. when I was in, in high school, uh, it, was, it was, of course, after the Supreme Court decision uh, saying that you shouldn't have organized prayer in school, they still did it, mm -hmm. and the prayers always ended, you know, with a uh, Jesus yeah. uh, in His name kind of thing. Christian, uh, and I, there were, I'm sure there probably weren't very many Jewish people at at, at our school, but that, but that's not right. Yeah. And I was an atheist, and it, and it offended me. Yeah, I, I would say um, this amendment is, is really bad because it's uh, self-contradictory. Uh, it's beautiful for prayer in school advocates, public school prayer advocates. Uh, but for people who are not Christians, this is a, you know, this is a threat because uh, this, this will potentially allow all kinds of religious activities. And we know that a lot of religious activities are uh, hindrances on education. And a school is not the place for prayer in the first place. We all know that you can pray to yourself quietly anywhere in the world without, you know, uh, without having a problem. There isn't a law against it, and there shouldn't be. So there isn't a need for a law like this. It's just not there. I mean, there are entire public school school districts, which, like you said, did not ever stop the organized prayer after 1963. And I heard about some in Tennessee and Alabama that completely ignored it, and uh, to this day still have organized prayers even over their intercoms. Yep. So. That's religious freedom. If you want it, it's there. I mean, you can go to those schools and find it. So this isn't necessary. And if it, anybody wanted to open up a church, it, this country is quite free. They'll give you a tax-free land to do it with. You know, it, uh, so you know, uh, we don't feel that uh, this uh, w any way restricting uh, any religious activity whatsoever by not uh, having this amendment in there. It. Uh, you guys uh, and women and uh, the church and everything have the power to do what you feel your conscience needs to do, but we just want to keep you out separate from church and state. We want to keep those things two separate entities. They belong definitely separate. And 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 really, even even the the strongest it needs to be said about schools, the uh, uh, the government and the schools, but especially the schools because. It's just not fair. How if you're uh, if you're Christian, how would you feel if I uh, went and tried to sell atheism to your to your little kid? Would that would you be offended? I suspect so. Well, uh, I have a child in public schools. Uh, I want the same right. I don't want her sold religion. You know, and it, it, keep it out. Keep it out. That's the the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And in the in the amendment, it talks about. No one will be forced to participate. Yeah. All right. Their idea in the discussions that they're having as they, as they uh, mull over how they're going to vote on this is that, well, you can get up and leave. That means that if you go to a graduation ceremony or a football game and they have a prayer over the public address system, you can get up and leave if you don't like it. Yes. My little girl is going to be expected to, if, if, if she doesn't want to participate, in these prayers, she's going to be expected to go stand in the hall. That's wrong. Yeah. 
So that camera's out of focus. There. Uh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Sorry to interrupt. You. No, you brought up an excellent point there. Uh, uh, you, they'll be ostracized by the fact that uh, there'll be the one or two students that are brave enough to get up and stand up for their rights will then be made up fun by the other kids. They're like, uh, you know, your daddy believes in, you know, as a Satanist or whatever else. You know, kids are really rough at that age. And, kids can be very cruel. Yeah. Yes, and not, not realize it, you know. That's right. Elementary schools. And, and, and our beliefs are, uh, we'll, we'll deal with them on our home, and folks can deal with them in their churches, and the schools are not the place. Mm -hmm. 